I'm fascinated by this because we're all here trying to do the same thing. You know, science communicators, science teachers, we're trying to get people, the world who just don't care about science, don't have time to learn science, don't, it's just, it just doesn't fit. And we're figuring out how to wave our hands and go, hey, 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 look at this, look at this, learn this, isn't this neat, isn't this something? What is it about your format? Obviously, it's effective. So just the way that you're presenting information, what is it there? Have you gotten feedback that can give us some clarity about just why is this work so well? Okay, so because of my background in graphic design, um, I approach every single topic as first I need to research and then organize a dense amount of information. So first I organize it in a way where um, it's fun and you can understand it at a glance. And um, so in my book, Women in Science, I profile 50 women from ancient times to modern day. And in my newest science book called The Wondrous Workings of Planet Earth, I profile different important ecosystems all over the world. I talk about their greatest benefits and their greatest threat that they face. So in both of these books, I'm I'm tackling a huge subject. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the first thing I do is that I break it down into how can I construct a book that makes sense to an audience who has never heard the subject before? Right. And how can I make it as illustrative as possible so that even the most reluctant reader gets excited by the illustrations and feels confidence a approaching these dense subjects because, you know, you put a little happy face on a cell or happy face on Marie Curie and all of a sudden it's this friendly image that can allow them to learn even more. Someone who who would open up a textbook and just start to cry and go into fetal, into the fetal position. This is something where you open it up no matter what page you open it to. You go, oh, wait, what is this? Hold on. This is cool. I want to, what is this all about? The illustrations invite the reader in so that they understand what they're going to learn before they even start reading. Mm -hmm. They see the images. They know what they're getting into. Nobody wants to open a book and see a Gutenberg Bible level of text. That's daunting. That's scary, especially with topics that are so complicated like ecology or, you know, an entire history of science. You know, it's... um, It's complicated stuff. So, you know, sometimes just putting a little smiley face and making sure that there's illustration to kind of emphasize each point you're making, Mm -hmm. like from four years old to 40 years old, you can get someone to read it and start to learn. I think even more than the illustration, though, because it's such a more free form way of presenting information, I like that there's a main body of text and then morsels smattered around. So if you're not even in the mood to read, you open up a page and you go, well, there's two, there's one sentence right there. What does that say over <laughs> in the corner over here? And you go, huh, all right, well, what does this one say? And then before you know it, you've read six of them. And then now you're, you're learning. It tricked you into learning. Yeah, almost, I'm all know? about tricking people into learning. <laughs> and it's really interesting that you say that because in every single one of my books, I make sure to like pack as many little illustrations with tiny sentences of fun facts next to it, mm-hmm. along with a larger body of text. But it's those fun facts. It, it makes it so that even someone who's like an early reader can just tackle those little sentences, those short little brief things. And then maybe the parent reads the, the whole body of text with them. Right. And then I get a lot of um, emails telling me that they, whatever book it is, even my ecology book, the the wondrous workings of planet earth book, um, they'll open it up and just do a page a night. And so like, maybe they'll learn about like the, the Sahara desert that night and Mm -hmm. then read all the little fun facts, read the little bio about every little picture and get every little morsel on there. Yeah. Get every little morsel and then start having conversations and looking things up even further on their phone and it creates this whole like experience between kid and parent. And then also teachers have been using them in their classrooms and the format of these books with the little fun facts, with the different segments of illustration and also segments of information has become a template for teachers to use in classrooms to have their kids write their own profiles about places or their own bios about women and it's been really exciting to see that work i see so they go like all right think of a city or a place or something and now make me a page exactly like this exactly it's It's like like a little project exactly like